Our portfolio has done reasonably well on an absolute and relative basis. Although we did give back some performance in the second half, primarily because of rotation towards more economically sensitive areas. We feel that's fairly normal. As you're coming out of bear market recession, you do see stocks which are which benefit from, from improving economic scenario I tend to outperform the one which offer high degree of certainty. So we feel pretty good about how the, you know, how the overall year has transpired, although second half we gave back uh, some of the gains from the first half. We have seen high level of rotation this year. That level of rotation we feel is fairly normal given the circumstances. Higher volatility typically leads to a higher turnover because we feel our job is to keep the portfolio fresh. That means as the opportunity set changes, we have to admit our mistakes or just upgrade the quality and try to capture the longer term upside as the market volatility offers us. So we feel pretty good about the, the overall uh, turnover that we've seen this year. Our longer term view has not changed. We do feel that we always try to buy more certainty at sensible prices, certainty in terms of earning certainty. However, uh, the vaccine data from Pfizer was pretty powerful, much better than markets were expecting. We do feel that as the economic tailwind continues to improve, businesses that, that benefit from that on a select basis could be interesting. So yes, we have shifted some of the stuff, but by and large, our portfolio remain um, relatively unchanged from pre-November period. The rebound uh, after the Pfizer vaccine has led to upgrading some of the earnings estimate in some of our names, while also reassessing some of the names that we did not own. The efficacy of 90% plus is actually pretty meaningful. The markets were clearly not expecting that. Having said that, there are some businesses which have been underperforming quite a bit since early last year, anyways, especially some consumer staples. We feel they're already discounting a lot of bad news or a lot of relative bad news um, on a go forward basis. The 2021, the economic rebound should continue, as, especially as you go into the second half. The question is what is discounted, what is not discounted. With the good vaccine data, you know, uh, with 90% plus efficacy, we do feel the economic rebound could be reasonably robust second half. The problem is even some of the cyclicals are discounting quite robust recovery, especially the quality cyclicals in general are discounting fairly robust recovery. And maybe some of those are a little bit ahead of the true delivery that some of these businesses can achieve. There are some businesses which, for example, if you look at on the banking side, very few banks uh, look attractive, but some of them are attractive because their their non-performing loan situation has not nearly been as bad as, as people were anticipating. On the other side, some of the consumer staples have actually underperformed quite dramatically over nine, 10 months are beginning to look interesting again. We are most concerned about some very fast growing technology names, especially the software side. The total addressable market estimates are way too high. It'll be hard for them to be able to grow at that rate to justify the valuations. On the other side, we have seen some of the very deep cyclicals, which have rebounded very, very sharply. And we feel that they, if you look at the total enterprise value of these businesses, because they have raised a lot of debt, they already, in some cases, the EV has already crossed or very close to it with January 1. It's hard to see how these businesses are in better position today than January 1. We are quite concerned about those two extremes. We actually feel it's a combination. While we do like some technology, we also like some of the healthcare names. We feel healthcare is one area which is offering very good value for the growth that you're getting and fairly predictable growth, which is not dependent on economic rebound. The other part is some select financials in certain markets, including Asia, which we feel offer secular growth. And especially coming out of the recession, we saw they, as interest rates begin to creep up, they could actually benefit of that. The performance has been reasonably good over the year, uh, particularly in, in the middle of the year when some of the e-commerce names or consumer discretion names recovered quite sharply. We feel that the risk of disruption in emerging markets is not fully priced in. And hence, very high quality businesses, we feel, could struggle on an ongoing basis because of COVID. We feel good about how the portfolio is positioned and our ability to sort of capture some of the longer term opportunities set within emerging markets. The biggest difference between emerging market portfolio and our global portfolio is that developed market portfolio is obviously very heavy on some of the largest tech names, things like Microsoft and Amazon's of this world, which we feel still offer 
very good longer term risk reward. Emerging markets are not only have quite significant exposure to China, with almost 40% of the portfolio in China, we also have exposure to some of the other tech names, but the e-commerce and consumer discretion names. So the, while there is overlap, the overlap is limited to the, some of the largest Chinese names. It, it doesn't go beyond that. The, the opposite of emerging markets is actually fairly attractive. I think emerging markets are coming out of uh, what has been a fairly lean period of the last decade or so. Now it's hard, it's hard for me to predict that they'll, you know, they're the beginning of a new multi-year run as such. However, the earnings picture is coming from a low base, which, which makes me a little bit optimistic about the recovery potential in some of the emerging markets. We feel quite optimistic about emerging markets, uh, particularly compared to 12 months ago. The few reasons are interest rates have declined precipitously in emerging markets. They're coming off almost a decade of very lean returns. Earnings estimates generally are not have, have not gone up a lot as the recovery gathers pace. Uh, a lot of emerging markets have actually handled, despite the fatalities, have handled the COVID situation remarkably well because they didn't have the ability, the fiscal uh, ability to, stim to put in stimulus as such. So coming from the low base, we feel good about the emerging market opportunity, but I think it's you got to be very, very selective because it's not a broad-based emerging market uh, answer. It's fairly selective to few countries. Emerging markets, I feel, are treated way too homogeneously. They are not that homogeneous. There's a big difference between what's happening in South Korea and what's happening in Brazil, what's happening in Argentina and what's happening in Mexico, what's happening in Turkey and what's happening in Russia. So we feel that it's much more a bottom-up story while incorporating the countries. So the opposite side is very Asia-centric, a lot less Eastern Europe and a lot less Latin America. We continue to find opportunities in China, particularly China A shares, or also in select for other places like India and Taiwan. ESG criteria is incredibly important to our process. We have always incorporated at you know sort of at the grassroots level in day-to-day -day research. We feel ESG should be part and parcel of everything we do. It is not something outside, and it also we also have to embody ESG in how we think and behave. We've always taken ESG extremely seriously and there are those incorporated on our day-to-day on, on -day research process. Uh, however, we also employ some former investigative journalists to, to get a sense of culture and the governance issues that come in both emerging markets as well as, as well as developed countries. And that has been an extremely powerful combination in avoiding some of the obvious problems. Uh, Wirecard being one of them where we actually wrote about the name before it blew up uh, uh, you know, last year in Germany.